Hello, everybody. This is Melinda, again, from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Um, the picture might not be as clear because I am recording this on Zoom because I want to be able to share my screen with you. And right now, my um, technological intelligence doesn't know any other way to do it. <laughs> so we're doing it on Zoom, but I'm not the important thing to look at. The slides are. So I want to talk to you today about some of the toxins in your life, about why they're bad for you, where they're coming from, and what you can do to get rid of it. Okay, so I am going to try to share my screen with you. Oh goodness, it was just here. Here we go. So I'm gonna share my screen. All right, we're gonna play this big. Perfect, okay. So I actually figured it out, yay. Okay, so if I don't look directly at you, it's because I have a few notes and I wanna make sure that I don't forget anything. Feel free to look at the screen. So this is going green, or trying to get as many toxins out of your life as possible, okay? Because we've talked before about how many toxins there are, where they're coming from, and that they're actually um, making our immune system worse, and they're making us sick. Our society is getting sicker all of the time, and it's because of what we put on our body, what we put in our body, and what we're breathing. So um, our homes are filled with toxic chemicals. These are just some of the few things that you can expect to learn out of this class. Why are some chemicals harmful? Um, we're gonna highlight some of the big ones and where they can be found and what they do to us, and then discuss some simple strategies so that you can start to detox your home as best you can, and see why reducing toxic chemicals is a goal you can actually get to. It seems like it's out, out there, it seems like it's too much, but it's really, it's really doable and it's something you should start today. So, in our homes, they're filled with all kinds of chemicals, okay? Our cleaners, personal care products, cosmetics, pots, pans, air fresh, all the things, air fresheners, everything we use that is man-made has some chemicals in it and most of those chemicals are not good for our health. They can negatively impact not only our health, but also the whole environment and animals and, and nature around us as well. So let's be clear first. Yes, when I'm talking about chemicals, there are good chemicals, there are bad chemicals. We are made up of chemicals in this, our cells, okay? Our cells have chemicals in them. It's the way we work. We're talking about toxic chemicals. So if you hear me just say chemicals, I mean the toxic chemicals that are in the products that we're using, okay? These are harmful, they're bad for us, they're not the good kind of chemicals that we need in our body, okay? They're all around us. So, did you know that the EPA states that 80, there are 80,000 different types of household chemicals? 80,000, and it grows every day. And less than 2% of those have actually been tested. And yet, they're allowed to be in products that we use every day. 98% we don't know what they do to us. Isn't that scary? And the 2% we do know don't do good things. So um, the toxins in our home account for 90% of all of the poisons from chemicals every year. 90% come from our home. There's a call to the U.S. Poison Control Center every 14 seconds from some kind of household toxic issue. Okay? So there are a lot of chemicals listed here, okay? I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I just want you to have an idea of the different ones and where they come from um, and what they can do to you, okay? So, oops, sorry. So the first one we're gonna look at, BHA or BHT. These are usually found in moisturizers and they use in makeup as preservatives. They're also harmful to fish and other wildlife when it gets into our, into our um, water systems and things like that. It's an endocrine disruptor. Our endocrine system is kind of in charge of every other system in our body, and we'll get to that in a minute. So just remember endocrine disruptor for now. A carcinogen, which means it can cause cancer. And bioaccumulation, which we will also get to in just a little bit. 
but bioaccumulation means it's slowly building in our system. And the more we get in our system, the sicker we're going to get and the more issues that it can cause, okay? Coal, do coal tar dyes. For some reason, I can never say that right the first time, ever. I don't think I've ever said it right the first time. Coal tar dyes, okay? This is artificial co coloring. It's found in foods, processed foods. It's found in lipstick. Um, you can look for P, uh, P phenyldiamine in hair dyes and other products that are listed with colors. Um, and it can, it can cause cancer also. It can cause heavy metal toxicity, um, which is crazy. It's one of the reasons I decided to stop coloring my hair. So people always ask me, who colors my hair? I said, God did, because I quit coloring it. This is just what color it is now. Um, one of the reasons is because I hated the maintenance. I mean, let's be real, you have to get your hair done all the time. But I didn't like the maintenance, but I also didn't like the chemicals that went with it. So it's one of the things that I could very easily get out of my life by just saying, you know, I am who I am. I'm 52 years old and gray is fine. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Okay, DEA related ingredients can also cause ca cancer. They're found in anything that's like creamy or foaming, your moisturizers, your shampoos. Um, it also acts as an, an adjuster of pH, which means it can also adjust our pH. It's found in sunscreens and soaps and shampoos and cleansers and acute toxicity in aquatic organisms and bioaccumulation. So in other words, again, we're, we're not being nice to our environment by putting this in our system and then into the waters as it washes down. The dibutyl phthalate is an endocrine disruptor. Again, we'll discuss that in detail in a minute. And it's a reproductive toxin. And you can find that in your, na in your fingernail polish, in your nail care products, okay? It's a solvent for some dyes. Um, it's used in nail polishes so it doesn't become as brittle. Phthalates are also used as fragrance ingredients in many of the cosmetics and other things that we find. Fragrance are recipes that are considered to be trade secrets. So anything you have that says fragrance, whether it is perfume or cleaner or candles or makeup or lotion, anything that says fragrance is actually, I'm going to read this so I don't mess it up, it is actually um, considered a trade secret. So manufacturers are not required to disclose the chemicals that are required to make that fragrance or perfume, um, which is kind of crazy. DBP, is, which is what the dibutyl phthalate is, is also commonly found in different kinds of plastic that makes it more flexible. The Health Canada recently announced regulations banning six phthalates, including this one, from children's toys and childcare articles um, because they know that they are bad, but they did not ban them out of makeup. Okay, don't harm the children, but harming adults is okay. Okay, so next, this is kind of my soapbox, so I hope I don't offend anyone, but there's a lot of bad things out there that we could be doing better with. So parabens, also an endocrine disruptor, we'll get to that, and this could interfere with the male reproductive system. Um, it is found in cosmetics as preservatives, but you can find it in other things as well. It also has lots, um, times been found in the fragrance category okay but when you see fragrance that's all it says on the label it doesn't have any other ingredients and they don't have to put them in there by law okay formaldehyde releasing preservatives if y'all go back to like junior high science formaldehyde is what they use to preserve the frogs that we dissected and anything else that has to be dissected is formaldehyde right those things can cause cancer they're also found in lots of cosmetics as preservatives. Um, other industrial applications for formaldehyde includes resin in wooden products, vinyl flooring, and other plastics. Permanent press fabric, don't get permanent press, just iron it yourself. Permanent press has formaldehyde releasing preservatives in it. 
and so do toilet bowl cleaners. I'm telling you, these things are found everywhere. Okay, so we've already talked about perfume and fragrance and how they hide things in there. But know that anything laid fragrance could be cancer causing, the carcinogen, neurotoxicity. That means your nerve, your nervous system. It's toxic to your nervous system, which we need to survive. It can also cause allergies and sensitivities to all kinds of other things. And again, it says in a variety of cosmetics, but it's fragrance and so many things. I, I, I can go down the aisles at Walmart and there's so many different things that now say fragrance with essential oils. Those are not real essential oils. Please don't believe that. Um, okay, the PEG compounds can be contaminated um, with 1,4-dioxine, um, which can be a carcinogen. Um, many of those are what's made the cream base of makeup. Young Living, um, all my makeup today is Young Living's, and we just released a brand new liquid and foundation and concealer, and it's amazing, and it has no toxins in it. It's all plant-based. Um, and based out of, out of um, everything found in nature that's good for you, okay? So the PEG compounds are also, can, um, hang on, lost my place to say, they're petroleum-based, compounds that are that are usually found in thickeners soft solvents softeners and moisture carriers okay petroleum based petroleum is oil like you put in your car i don't want that all over my body and in my system okay petroleum is a carcinogen that's next that's in hair care products that says shine, moisture barrier lipstick or lip balms, things like that. Um, these can also cause uh, um, eye irritations um, and allergies. The European Union classified the petroleum as a carcinogen and it will not let it be used in its cosmetics anymore in Europe. It's been outlawed. But here in the US, we are welcome to use all the chemicals we want on our body. So that's why we have to be smart. We are the land of the free, but that means we've got to be smarter than some because we have more freedoms, which actually gives us more ability to have more things in our products. I guess I'll say it that way. Okay, the siloxanes is the way I say it. I'm not really sure if that's the way it's supposed to be said. It's also an endocrine disruptor, also a reproductive, to reproductive toxin. Again, in those cosmetics, this is why I switched all of my makeup to Young Living, all of it. Um, it's used, anytime you see something in cosmetics or skincare that says soften or smooth or moisten, you're probably looking at some siloxanes, okay? It's a silicone-based compound, and it, it also makes hair products dry more quickly. It makes deodorant cream slide on more easily. And they're using moisturizers and facial treatments. Okay, sodium lauryl sulfate is a carcinogen. It causes cancer. And it is found in anything that foams. Okay, foaming cosmetics, foaming shampoo, foaming shower gels, face cleaners, hand, hand soap, all the foaming things. All the foaming things, are they foam because of sodium lauryl sulfate. You can get foaming pumps and put regular soap in there. About this much in the bottom, fill the rest with water and you can make your own foaming soap, but it foams because of the pump, not because of the ingredients. So there is a difference there. Um, it's found in a lot of household cleaning products, in dish soap, laundry soap, all of the soaps. So this is why I've replaced all of my soaps with soap from Young Living that's clean also. Triclosan is the last one, and we're gonna go into this one a little more detail too. Again, endocrine disruptor, which is why I'm gonna explain what that means later because it's in everything is having an issue here. And an antibiotic resistant, okay? Triclosan makes you antibiotic resistant. How many people do you know of these days that they take an antibiotic and it didn't work, so they take another one, and they have to take a different one because that one didn't work because they're becoming antibiotic resistant. Triclosan is, um, the Canadian Medical Association has banned triclosan in all 
on antibacterial consumer products. Canada has outlawed it. Triclosan, almost everything, almost everything that you have that says antibacterial has triclosan in it. That's how it got antibacteria. The problem is it causes all these other issues. And the other problem is they, the triclosan kills all bacteria, which makes you antibiotic resistant. It kills all the bacteria, the bad bacteria, which we do want to get rid of, and the good bacteria, which we need to keep. We need bacteria in our bodies to be healthy. And this triclosan is killing all of it. Okay, and it's causing us to have all kinds of issues. Um, and you'll be surprised in a later slide where triclosan is, because it's gonna, it's gonna make you say, what? How did that happen? Okay, so these chemicals have a proven risk. These are the 2% that have been studied. There are others, but these are some of the big ones that have been studied. There is a risk for your health. There is a risk for our environment. Okay, did you know that indoor air pollution is five to 10 times, this says two to five, now they're saying five to 10 times more toxic than the outdoor air, your indoor air pollution. It's because our air vents and our air filtration systems are not meant to hold the amount of toxins that we're putting in it now. Because we have so many toxins in our lives that it's just holding it and getting recirculated through all of our um, air that we breathe. So. So we've got to find ways to reduce that. If you don't do anything else, if you don't learn anything else from this video, and I hope you learn a lot more than this, open the windows of your house. Let some new air come in and exchange because the air outside is cleaner than the air inside. So open your windows, especially if it's a nice day, turn on some fans, get some things going and clear out the air in your house. So the toxic facts, are a little bit crazy. There is one death every 20 seconds because of the toxins around us. One every 20 seconds. If I can help educate people and get some of this out of their house so they, someone in their family will not be one of the 20, one of the deaths every 20 seconds, then I feel that much better. And if those people can go share this video and tell everybody else, so that we can keep people as healthy as possible. That is my goal. That is what I want to do. That is my jam. That is, I just want everybody to be healthy. I want you to get the junk out of your house so that you can feel so much better, okay? Now, the toxic facts. This is true. So the chemical abstract service, and you go Google all this. You know, that's my favorite thing. Go Google it. Don't trust me. Go Google it. It's a division of the American Chemical Society says in 1965, there were 211 and some odd registered chemicals that were found in our products that we use every day. In 2008, there are 37 million registered chemicals every day with at least 4,000 new entries every day. What? <laughs> and you wonder why we're sicker. You wonder why people are having trouble getting pregnant. You wonder why there's more cancer. You wonder why there's more every other disease out there. So many of these things are within our control if we will get the toxins out of our house, out of our lives. There's always gonna be toxins there, okay? I am not perfect, and even if I was, I live in the natural world, and not everybody else is using non-toxic things, so I will be exposed to toxins. I will never be perfect, okay? But we do the best we can. We get as much out as we can as possible. Why do you think there's so many new entries in there every day? Why? Because when something gets studied and they find out a chemical causes something bad to happen, they change it by one or two molecules, they change the name and they re-enter it so they can get it labeled again. So these things are not going away when they're found out to be bad. They're being tweaked and put back in. That is something that kind of drives me crazy. Okay, so why do chemicals threaten our health? Why do they make us sick, give us allergies, give us cancer? Why do we have heart disease, liver disease, all the things, okay? Because one, they're very easily absorbed. 
We can breathe them in. When you're cleaning, all the cleaners in your house, if you are not using 100% natural, and I mean 100%, there's something in there that's not so great for you, okay? Which is why I have one cleaner. Stay tuned, people. One cleaner will clean your entire house. Go back and watch my video about Thieves Cleaner. It does everything. It's 100% pure. No chem no toxic chemicals. It's great, and I love it, and it smells amazing. So we can breathe it. We can absorb it through our skins. We can ingest it in the food we eat. People, the processed food we eat has chemicals in it. That's how it lasts a long time. That's what makes it moist. All of those things. Don't ever buy a cake mix that says moist. Moist equals some of the bad chemicals. That's what has to go into it in order for it to be moist. Okay. Mass productions. It's threatening us because, I mean, look at the, the 30, however many, the 30 something million. I forget now what the number was. A lot. Okay. A lot. They're, they're, it's being made by the, by the billions of pounds every year. Okay. There's not enough testing. 2% of testing on all of the chemicals out there is not enough. The other thing is heavy use of pesticides in gardens, in homes, in schools. You know, they have to spray all of the school playgrounds for the things to keep the bugs away and the weeds away and, and, and all the things. And then the places that are growing our foods are using different things to kill the weeds and all of that, and just heavy, heavy use to pesticides. Did you know if you spray the ground with pesticides or chemicals, it will stay in the ground for 30 years. You have to put nothing on it for 30 years for it to become a chemical free land. That's a long time. Like I just learned that this year. That kind of like blew my mind. I also learned that at least in Arkansas where I live, that if you are labeled organic, but part of your crop, a certain percentage, is threatened by some kind of bug or plant virus, or I don't know about plants enough to know what all would kill your crop, okay? But if it's a certain percentage, you're allowed to spray that that field anything you want including toxic chemicals and you can still call it organic what's the purpose this is why we have to know our farmers and we have to know where things come from it's why i use young living because i know where it comes from i know the promise and i know that it's pure and i know that it's good and i know that i'm preaching <laughs> but people we have to know where things come from okay and then environmental persistence. Like I said, it lasts for 30 years. It lasts for decades. It's around a long time before you can get rid of it, okay? Now, we can't ignore the risks. So, some chemicals are very harmful. Some harm plants. Some people get cancer from chemicals. Others may be carried for long distances in the air that affect people far away from where they're even actually used. This is why I say if we're alive, we're going to be exposed, okay? Long-term effects, if we do not try to change this and we have these chemicals in our world around us, in our homes all the time, you can have organ damage. It will weaken your immune system. Hello, people. We need our immune system, okay? It will cause reproductive problems and birth defects. It can cause mental or cognitive or physical development delays in children. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist, and I can tell you from experience, we are seeing a lot more issues across the board in all children. And I believe that toxins is one of the reasons for that. Okay, one of the other long-term risks is cancer. I don't want cancer. Nobody wants cancer. We don't need all that, right? Okay, so the important things to know, which is pretty funny because I have jumped way ahead of myself because I just got so excited, okay? I know I'm passionate and I, I hope you can hear it in my voice and I hope I don't feel like I'm preaching too much, but I am passionate about this because I want people to be healthy, okay? So we're gonna talk about the three main things that we had issues with in all of that list, right? Endocrine disruptors, carcinogens, and bioaccumulation. Okay, endocrine, disrupt endocrine disruptors are chemicals that interfere with your body's endocrine system. Okay, your endocrine system produces, well, 
if the chemicals are in, it will produce an adverse developmental, reproductive, neurological, and immune effects in humans and animals, okay? Because this is going into our water system, into our ground. It's not just us, it's, it's our animals, our pets. If you have pets, if you have dogs or cats and those sweet little paws are walking on your floor, whatever you cleaned your floor with is on their paws. It's getting in their paws and absorbing. You know what else they do? They lick those paws, okay? It's getting in them. So if you, even if you don't have children, if you have fur babies, Fur babies and any other kind of animal, gerbils, I don't care what they are, they're also breathing in and walking on all of the toxins that you're putting down, okay? Now, carcinogens means that they cause cancer. It's that easy. Um, bioaccumulation means that over time, you're accumulating these things into your system, okay? Um, our system, our, our bodies, can only get rid of so much in a day. We can only get rid of so much through our urine, through our poop, through our, all the things, bodily functions. It's a real thing, people. It's bodily function, okay? It can only get rid of so much. So if we are bombarding our bodies with more and more chemicals and it can't get rid of it, we're keeping it. We're holding on to it. That has to get stored somewhere, okay? So it's storing itself in your liver or your stomach or your pancreas or your gallbladder or your heart. It's going to go somewhere, okay? This is why it affects every system in your body, okay? Now, you can look at this little picture. I'm pointing like you can see me. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, look at the little picture on there about your endocrine disruptor. I mean, your endocrine system, okay? Your endocrine system affects almost every process in your body, okay? We're gonna do a real quick little biology recap, okay? Your pineal gland produces melatonin, which helps you sleep, and serotonin, which helps you be. Serotonin is your happy drug in your brain, so it's a neurochemical, um, and it's, it's, it's what makes you feel happy. And, so, and how many people do we know that are struggling with anxiety and depression? Chemicals, people, chemicals are bad, okay? Your hypothalamus, it also controls that. And their hypothalamus controls your temperature, your hunger, your, uh, the important parts, aspects of parenting and attachment behaviors, your thirst, your fatigue, and again, your sleep, okay? Anybody else out there having trouble sleeping? Anybody else having issues with hunger all of the time? Or lack thereof, it goes on both ends. Okay, it also talks about your pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland um, helps control your growth, your blood pressure, certain func functions of the sex organs, your thyroid gland, your metabolism, as well as some aspects of pregnancy and childbirth and nursing and kidneys and temperature regulation and pain relief. I don't know about you, but I need my pituitary gland working pretty good. Right? How many people do we know that struggle with weight issues? This controls your metabolism. The other things are controlling your hunger and your stress and all of those things. Toxic chemicals are making it worse. Okay. It also has your thymus, which is your immune system. Your immune system, people, we need our immune system. And if you're watching this video later, we're in the year 2020. And it's a crazy year. But I mean, off the charts crazy. I never thought I'd even be alive in a time like this, which makes me even more passionate about these things, okay? Go Google 2020 if this is later and see what happened in 2020 and tell me we don't need our immune system, okay? Your thyroid gland controls your body uses of energy. It makes proteins. It controls the body's sensitivity to other hormones. Okay, these are all things we need. How many people do you know with thyroid issues? I have met so many people saying they have thyroid issues. Okay, we also have adrenal glands. Those are hormones you can't live without, okay? They're sex hormones and they're cortisol. Cortisol is your stress level. The more cortisol you have, the more stress you have, okay? The more cortisol you have, the more weight you carry around your midsection, 
don't know about you guys, but I need to reduce all of that myself too. No, working on that. Your pancreas is part of the digestive system and it's critical for controlling blood sugar. How many people do we know with blood sugar issues? Diabetes, all these things. It's toxins in our system making it worse. Okay, and then the endocrine system also covers your testes and ovaries, so your male and female reproductive glands. Again, people struggling to get pregnant, people um, having ovulation and period issues, whether it's too much or not enough or all the things. Um, even men are having issues, okay? So to sum all of that up, we need our endocrine system. And we need our endocrine system to be working well. And how many of those things on the list, go back and rewatch it if you have to, said endocrine disruptor. Almost all of them, okay, almost all of them. Um, so it is, it's just, it's, mm, get them out of your system, get them out of your body, get them out of as much as you can, okay? Sorry, I should have flipped your screen there, so we're moving on. Huh, that was everything I just said. <laughs> okay, so phthalates better off known as BPA to most of us. Most, most people have heard of BPA. Most people know BPA is bad. Most people know to buy plastics without BPA if you have to use plastic at all, okay? Um, the BPA and phthalates, they make plastics more flexible and resilient. That's why they like it, okay? It's also found though, did you know, in detergents and perfumes and fragrances and vinyl tiles, and garden hoses, and plastic raincoats in your deodorant, and that they end up in the body anytime we swallow them or inhale them. You're wearing a big plastic raincoat and you're breathing in all the time, you're breathing in BPA and phthalates. You knew not to take your plastic, to get the BPA out of your plastic water bottles, but do you know where else it is, right? Um, it impacts the impacts of phthalates haven't even really been figured out yet. They've been measured in humans, but they cause reproductive problems and liver problems in lab rats. Lab rats. What we do know is that they're linked to endocrine disruptors. Here we go. Low sperm count, developmental toxicity, and reproductive toxicity. I don't want any of that, right? So what are some safer options? Reduce the amount of fragrance things that you use. Look for plastics that are listed in the fragrance ingredients. Never microwave plastic. It lets all of this out into your food so that you can then eat it, okay? And just reduce the use of your plastic overall. Um, get a cleaner deodorant. Those kinds of things. Look for the words perfumes and fragrances. We want all of those to be gone, right? What do phthalates do to our body? Well, people with even a little bit of phthalate, like fake tans and face creams and things like that, it's found in their bloodstream. And when they're found, when do they find it in the bloodstream? It makes you twice as likely to develop diabetes. That's a problem, <laughs> right? Phthalates equals bad stuff, right? They are hormone disrupting. Um, they mimic estrogen, so it can be linked to birth defects or other illnesses. The European Commission proposed a ban on phthalates in 2002, but it's still found in some of the world's best known fragrances and things like that. It can actually cause infertility in men and genital abnormalities, but in Europe it's banned. In the United States, not a problem. We can have all of that in our products. Okay, triclosan. Well, I told you we were getting back to this one. Triclosan is the active ingredient in almost all antibacterial products. It is an endocrine disruptor. It causes thyroid problems and it causes cancer. The Canadian Medical Association has banned it. Can't have it in Canada. It contributes to antibiotic resistant bacteria, also known as superbugs, or they call them flesh eating diseases. We've heard about more, than, more of that than I've ever, like I didn't hear about it my whole life and now I've heard it, of it several times, okay? Triclosan also contaminates the environment as it washes down our, our, our sinks and drains and goes to rivers and lakes. It also causes allergies and asthma. But where is it? One study found it's the worst offender, hand sanitizer. 
And who do we know that's using hand sanitizer these days in 2020? Everybody's got some hand sanitizer right now, okay? One study found that nearly 75% of everybody tested for triclosan, found, it was found in their urine. Center for Disease Control and Prevention found that 75% of all people have triclosan in their urine. Stop using hand sanitizers. Stop using antibacterial things, okay? Stop using it. Young Living has a thieves hand sanitizer with no triclosan, no toxic chemicals whatsoever. And it actually has essential oils in it that makes your hands soft. You know how you, actual yucky hand sanitizer dries your hands out, and makes it all yucky? Not thieves hand sanitizer. It's amazing, okay? All right, moving on. So, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, SLES, is where you might find it on the ingredient label. It can be a mutagen, okay? If it has sufficient amounts, it's capable of changing the information in the genetic material of your cells. Okay? It can change genetic material. This is not, it's not okay. This is not okay. I can also tell you as a pediatric occupational therapist, there are more genetic issues out there than I have seen in a long time, if ever, okay? It has been studied to induce mutations in bacteria. So, you know, you get sick from one thing and you get over it, but you get sick from another thing because the bacteria is slightly different than this one was. SLS has the ability to mutate bacteria, okay? It also enters and maintains residual levels in your heart, your liver, your lung, and your brain, just from contact with your skin. Do you see why I want so many people? Please, please, you see why I want you to get this out of your, out of your house as much as possible, okay? Residual levels, heart, liver, lung, brain, just from touching it. Okay, SLS also denatures protein, um, which is not good. And it has a, a thing that actually damages young eyes, permanent damage in young eyes. Would you like to know where SLS and SLES is located? In the No More Tears shampoo for children. It's found a lot of other places, but when you look at damaging young eyes and you put it in shampoo for children, makes me angry, okay? Makes me angry, not fair, and people have no idea what they're doing. So where do you find sodium lauryl sulfate? That that we just talked about, okay? In foaming products, we went back to foaming, remember? Soap, shampoos, toothpaste, dishwashing soap, laundry soap, all of those things are in sodium lauryl sulfate, okay? Soaps, do they touch us? Yes. Shampoo, does it touch us? Yes. Toothpaste? Yes. Dishwashing soap? Sure, because you're washing your dishes, right? Laundry soap. You might think, well, I don't touch my laundry soap, but it gets in your clothes. Are your clothes touching you? All of these things touch us. And remember what I said by residual amounts, just by touching it. Oh. We gotta make it go away, right? No more foaming products. Young Living has toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, soap, lotion, laundry soap, dishwashing soap. It has all of these things. It has these toxic chemicals. Young Living has a version. It's 100% clean. And you guys, there's a there's a um, there's a couple of different ways you can sign up with Young Living, and one of them is a thieves starter kit, and it has a lot of these things in it. It has the toothpaste and it has dish, dish soap, I think. It has the cleaner, a bunch of different things. It's a great way to start with Young Living. Um, the other thing is they have a, a rewards program where if you do a monthly order, and monthly orders are not required in Young Living, but if you choose to do that, then you can order so much a month and slowly flip out all of these things in your house. That's what I did until we have slowly replaced everything in our home with a toxic free version. And I'm here to tell you, family of five feels 
way better than we've ever felt. We don't hardly ever go to the doctor. Family of five for the last five or six years, I think have been to the doctor six times total. And a couple of those for, for well child checkups, okay? It's worth the money up front to replace these toxic things in your house because you will not spend money on the back end going to the doctor. You will not have to spend it on over-the-counter medicines because you will have all the things that you need in your home already. It's so, so worth the, worth the investment, okay? It's not even really that much. It's not even that much. What is the health of you and your friends and your family worth? Okay, we'll pay the cable bill, we'll pay the phone bill, but if I have to get a soap that costs a tiny bit more than the soap at Walmart, I'm gonna throw a fit. Really? Because once I found out what was in the soap at Walmart, I, I don't want it anymore. I, I, I will find, I'll not, go, I'll not go out to eat once a week. Uh, I'll take one of those off the list in order to be able to get what I need because this chemical business, I don't want any part of it. Sorry, that's my soapbox. Okay, <laughs> now propylene glycol, there's more, yay. Okay, propylene glycol, um, it can cause contact dermatitis, kidney damage, liver abnormalities. It can keep skin growth from, from doing what it's supposed to be in human tests. Um, it can cause cell damage in your membrane, it causes rashes, dry skin, surface damage, propylene glycol. Okay, now the acute fix affects, um, if you inhale it, you can ingest it, because believe it or not, it's in your food too. It can cause eye irritation, skin irritation, um, gastrointestinal issues, that's your gut, nausea, headache, vomiting, central nervous system, depression. Okay, where do you find it? Where is all this stuff? Because I don't want it. Okay. Cosmetics, lotions, fragrances, shaving cream, deodorant, shampoo, toothpaste, lip balm, soap, mouthwash, cleaners, disinfectant gels, uh, a humidifying solution, humidor solution, sorry, baking goods, artificial fog, vaping products, antifreeze, bath bomb, skin toner, and cough syrup. Now, all of those sounded like things that you might be using on yourself, except antifreeze. So propylene glycol is in the same family as antifreeze that you put in your car. And on the antifreeze bottle it says do not ingest, don't get it on you, and if you do wipe it off and be sure you clean it and blah blah blah. And yet it's in all these other things in our stuff. Okay. So what's in your cleaners? Everything. Can we just say everything? Because it's everything. Everything's in your cleaners. Everything bad. Okay. Bioaccumulation is like what I said. It's building up toxins in your system until we get overloaded and our bodies can't handle it. And that's when we get sick. Okay. Because if you're using shampoo, conditioner, lotion, deodorant, makeup, sunscreen, bug spray, hairspray, hair, other products, those are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of chemicals that you're putting on your body every single day. They say that the average woman puts on over 800 chemicals a day. Is that right? I think that's right. It's a lot. Okay. She's put on a lot. 80% of those we put on before breakfast. So they're there with us all day long. Okay. You might say, I only use a little bit or I don't use that or I try to use good soap or I do that. Great. But there's so much in everything else if you're not trying to replace everything, that our bodies can't break it, cannot break it down enough. Um, they can do, they can get rid of a lot of it, but not all of it. The extra toxins in our system will cause stress on your liver because our liver is what tries to process any of these unnatural things that come through our body, right? Um, when that happens, we might see reactions with our skin, breakouts, rash, eczema, dermatitis, all these other skin issues, right? Those issues can be symptomatic of even symptomatic of even bigger problems, right? We're overburdening our liver and our gut can't process everything like it's supposed to. Okay, so our skin. A lot of people think that our skin is 
our barrier, our protection from the outside world, right? It is not. Okay, this is my sciency therapist side coming out. Whatever you put on your skin gets absorbed into your bloodstream and, oops, sorry, that knocked my thing over, and circulated through all of your organs. Whatever you put on your skin, in the bloodstream, within about 27 seconds, and it starts getting circulated through all of your organs, okay? Everything you put on it, everything it comes in contact with, okay? So only, like our, our skin is, is also very, very thin. Like we feel like it's, you know, we feel like it's pretty thick and pretty protective. It is not. It is absorbent, <laughs> but it's also only one-tenth of an inch thick. Okay, one tenth of an inch separates everything from the outside of your body to all of your bloodstream and your in your organs. Okay, it, it's not it's not a lot. Okay, so we've talked about cosmetic labeling um, and that it has fragrances in it, but check this out: manufacturers are required to di disclose cosmetic ingredients, but the labels do not have to list an unintentional ingredient, like byproducts or impurities, formaldehyde, things like that. What is unintentional? How do you unintentionally get something in a product? I don't understand, but it doesn't have to go on the label. So just because you don't see it on the label does not mean that it's not there, okay? This one, right over here, over there, it's over there, makes me angry. Household cleaner, labeling, unlike cosmetics or anything else, the disclosure of the ingredients that are in your cleaners for anything is voluntary. Voluntary. They don't have to put what's in it on the bottle. So you have to know the company and you have to know where it comes from. This is why I use Thieves Household Cleaner. From Young Living, 100% plant-based and clean, no toxins, cleans every surface in my house and smells amazing. One bottle, it's cheaper than all the stuff you buy at the store, and it's better for you. It actually can help you be healthier in, while it is at the same time cleaning off all the bad stuff off of our surfaces, okay? Don't have to be on the label. Ah, okay, so. We've done all of that. Now you know all the bad stuff. Now you're freaking out with me, right? You're freaking out with me. Okay, so what do you do? This is where we go. This is why it's so important to know what's out there. I didn't know what was out there until I started using Young Living and doing, going to classes, watching videos like this and researching things, okay? Then I came to know how bad the things are out there and I started trying to make changes, okay? Make simple changes changes. Start small. You can go throw it all out and replace it with Young Living. I am more than happy to do that with you and help you figure out what you need first. But most of us have to go a little at a time. A little at a time, okay? Focus on the things you can control. Know what ingredients you need to get rid of first. Look at your family. Look at your health. Do any of those things stand out out of those lists of things of what we said they did? Get rid of those first, okay? Then you have to take actions of replacing, replacing all the other things in your home, slowly but surely. Try to get, use, get rid of those. When you know better, you do better, right? You've, people have become ingredient reading people, label reading people when it comes to their food, but they're not doing it on anything else. Not on their cleaning products or their makeup or things like that, okay? Know better so you do better. Which items are you exposed to every single day in the morning, okay? What are some of the regular household things that you do that might be holding potential, potential harmful chemicals the most? What's in the food you eat? You'll be surprised. Um, and what ingredients do you need to take a, a closer look at? Look at those things, break them down, and figure out where you want to start. I am here for you. This is... A conversation. I want this to be a conversation. I don't want to like teach you and never hear from you. I don't want to give you this information and wonder if it fell into the right hands. Please comment. Please
please go to my website, www.essential-diffusion.com. Okay, you can, you can get on there and you can contact me from there. You can see a lot more information, but I want this to be a conversation. I want us to be, I, want, I would love for us to have a relationship and let me help you figure out what you can get rid of first, what you can make the most impact with your family. Okay, I want to do that. Replace the non-negotiables. No more air fresheners. No more, and with air fresheners, it's air fresheners and candles and wax burners and plug-ins and all of those things. You see this thing going over here? Over there? I can't point backwards. Oop. That's my diffuser. It's running essential oils and it smells amazing. And it's healthy for me. It actually is helping my body and not destroying my body. I don't have candles or any of those things I listed before anymore. Try to replace your toothpaste, your hand and body soap, your dish soap, your household cleaners, laundry detergent, dryer sheets, some of your foods. Do you know dryer sheets is one of the most toxic things in your house? Just switch them over to wool dryer balls. Done. Done. And if you have issues with your dryer balls, with static, because I did and I don't like static, you clip clothespins, not clothespins, I'm sorry, safety pins all over the dryer balls. I probably have eight per dryer ball and I use three or four dryer balls each time. The, the metal of the safety pins pulls the static electricity out of your clothes. No more static problems. Somebody also told me you could wad up a thing of foil and put it in your dryer to do a static too. I've never tried that because my dryer ball thing works. Okay. Dryer sheets. Why are they so bad? Because they get in your clothes, they get in your closet, it's seeping out of your closet all of the time, you're wearing your clothes, it's on your skin, you're smelling the smell, okay? Oh, and this, the, this whole scent boosting thing, just say no, 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 stop it. <laughs> Don't increase the scent of anything, okay? We do not want the scent to last longer, unless, of course, it's essential oils, and then we'll be great. Okay, so we've already talked about this. Know your farm or know your source. Know where it comes from. Okay, this is why I chose Young Living. How do you, what do you replace them with? What products do you use? You use those simple things, okay? And if you don't want to trust me, you can go to one of these apps and you can check out what that product says. Here's the deal. Many of these apps have now been bought out by companies that control the products. So they may not be, the www.ewg.org is probably the truest version of all of those, okay? So what are we waiting for? Because a year from now, you're gonna wish you would have started today. If you're saying, well, I don't really see any of those health things going on in my life, give it time, okay? I'm 52, things were happening, Things were not going super well with my health until I switched things over and got the toxins out of my house and I feel so much better. My health is better. Your body starts to replace some of those damaged things with better things once you get the toxins out of your, out of your body, out of your house, right? So stay focused, figure out what it is you wanna do with me, with me, no, with your chemicals. You can do it with me, I will help you get the chemicals out of your house because it is my passion, my passion to get some chemicals out of people's homes. I hear people say they have issues with allergies and they have issues with reproduction and they have issues with headaches. They have issues with you name it, you name it. They have issues with everything. And it's all I can do to say, get the chemicals out of your house. Please replace them with things that are good. You know better so you do better, okay? So again, I want this to be a conversation. I want this to, um, I want this to bless you. I want this to help you. Yes, I know this one actually is a little scary, but that's okay. As long as we take care of it, as long as we're making steps to do better, right? Okay, any questions, put them below, go to the website. You can go to my Facebook page, Essential Diffusions with an S, because there was already another one. So Essential Diffusions with an S on Facebook um, is my group and you can ask questions there, message me there, find me, message it right down here. I, I will come back and watch, okay? So take care, I love you guys, I hope you're healthy 
that you're happy and you're living in an abundant life. See you guys later. I am now going to stop the recording when I figure it out. All right, stopping the screen share. We're going to...